Hello students, in this video we'll prove that every function of bounded variation is the difference of two increasing functions. So let's suppose f has bounded variation on a, b. Okay, I'm going to define a new function, define t of x to be the supremum of these expressions, the sum j goes from 1 to n, f of xj minus f of xj minus 1. That looks exactly like the definition of bounded variation, except now I'm going to let this, or here, p, which is going to be x0 through xn, is a partition of a up to the point x, okay? So if I plug in the different values of x on this interval, I'm going to get a different sort of total variation. Well, it's one thing that's absolutely obvious from this definition is that as I increase, as if x is less than, if x is less than or equal to y, then t of x is less than or equal to y. So that should be obvious, and let's figure that y. So here's the first claim. So claim t of x is less than or equal to t of y if x is less than or equal to y. In other words, this function t is an increasing function. Of course, we can see it because if I have a partition, so if p is a partition, a parti and why is this claim true, p a partition of a to x, then p tilde, which is p union, just the point, um, just the point y, basically, if I add in y, is a partition of a to y, okay? And that actually gives us a really bit of good, good information over here, because what does that tell us? That tells us over here that if I have any partition of a to x, then what can I say? So if p is a partition of a to x, and I can write this down, I can write down the sum, j goes from 1 to n of f of xj minus f of xj minus 1. That's what, and if I add on this thing over here, if I add on, the difference between f of x and f of y, this is always going to be less than or equal to what? That's less than or equal to t of y, right? Because that's one such partition. So if this, this is the partition p tilde, basically. So p tilde represents this expression over here, this term inside the supremum. And since t of y is the supremum of all such things, t of y is going to exceed this quantity over here. Now, if I take the supremum of this quantity over all p, what I can do is this now. So now take the over here of this whole inequality, take the supremum over all such p that are partitions of ax, and what will this turn into over here? This expression over here is going to turn into a what? That turns into a t of x by taking the supremum, then I have t of x plus f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to t of y. Excellent. Okay, and so now here's the nice thing. Uh, if x is less than y, we can conclude our proof now by doing the following. So if x is less than y, let's assume this, then f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to this absolute value over here, f of x minus f of y. That's a trivial inequality. But f of x minus f of y is always less than or equal to t of y minus t of x. So let's think of the t of y minus t of x by our claim over here. And so if I rearrange this a little bit, what will I have? If I rearrange this, um, I want to actually change this to uh, change this around a little bit so I get the same thing over here. So let's actually modify this, get the same thing over here. So we can just change these x's to y's. Okay. So there's our inequality. And so what I want to do now is I want to figure out what I can put over here. So I can, this is certainly true by this statement over here. But now, what do I want? I would like to have a f of um, a f of y, f of y minus f of x. You should have to change the order of x and y, and that's certainly still true since this quantity is definitely less than its absolute value because the absolute value of this thing is the same as the absolute value of the signs. And so now, what I can do is this: I can throw the t of x over here. So t of x minus f of x 
is less than or equal to t of y minus f of y. So that says that this function t of x minus f of x is a what? t of x minus f of x is increasing. And so now we can write down the statement of our, of our results. So our function f of x is t of x minus what? Minus t of x minus f of x. Okay? And so, of course, t of x minus t of x is 0, and negative negative is positive, so this is certainly an algebraically true statement. And now we know that this function over here is increasing, because it, by first principles, that's a trivial statement. And now this function over here is increasing by this inequality. So a function of bounded variation can be written as its total variation minus its total variation minus itself. Both those functions are increasing, so any function of bounded variation is the difference of two increasing functions. Thank you very much.